Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Our Travel Talk series by Trip 101. My name is Nirja Bhatt. I'm a content and project executive with Trip 101, and um, I'm excited to talk about another destination with you guys today. So this series, we've created the series to give travelers a different perspective on how to travel to their dream destination by talking to different tour guides, um, experienced travelers, and local experts in a city. So we hope that uh, you can take away a lot of information from these interviews and plan your itinerary more efficiently. Today's session, we will be talking about Skadu, a beautiful city filled with all inspiring mountains and natural beauty. And we'll be joined by Kumar. Uh, he's a tour guide and guiding travelers to see the best of the city. And he also has an experience of eight years and is multilingual. So, you know, you're in good hands when you choose him as your travel guide. Uh, so, hi, thank you for your time. Uh, can you just introduce yourself a little bit? <clears throat> uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Kamal here and I'm from the northern region, which is called Gilgit Baltistan. I'm here guiding since last uh, eight years. Uh, in the mountains of Karakuram, Hindu Kush and Himalayas. And I am trying to give very authentic experiences to the travelers from around the globe about the local culture, mountains, traditions, history and archaeological sites, which starts from Mohenjo-daro Karachi to the Karakuram K2, the world's second highest mountain in the world. So I'm here to assist and share information about tours and other things which we are going to conduct in this interview. Thank you very much. Okay, perfect. So before we start with our main interview, could you just introduce Kadu a little bit? Just tell us about the city, what it's known for, things like that. Yeah, Gilgit Baltistan is a fifth province, yet not mm -hmm. officially announced, but it's a fifth province and Baltistan is the another division and Gilgit is another division. And inside of Baltistan, we have four districts. We have Skardu, uh, Haplu, Shigar, and Karman. So about Skardu, we are going to talk about today. So in Skardu, we have multi uh, destinations to discover and to experience. It's a gateway to the mighty Karakuram, mm -hmm. the magnificent Ketu, and other glaciers as well. And the most ancient city is, one of them is Skardu. It used to be the business hub in early 80s and early 70s between Pakistan and India through Ladakh. So it's just magnificent to experience. Uh, yeah, I've seen pictures of Skardu on Instagram and just, it's such a lovely place. And uh, yeah, really excited to talk more about it with you. Thank you. All right, let's get started. Uh, let's talk about how to get to Skardu and just the city center. So my first question to you would be, how far away is the city center from the airport? And what's the easiest way to get there? Yeah, it's uh, 16 kilometers from the airport. We have segregated Skardu into Lower Skardu and Upper Skardu. The airport is in Lower Skardu and the main city is in Upper Skardu. So it's 15 or uh, 16 kilometers from the airport. Perfect. And how can you get there with a car or any public transportation? There are multi sources to get to the city. The locals who travel from Lower Skardu to Upper through the road, uh, they have means of transportation from public transport uh, and private transport, private taxis, uh, bike kiosks, and the tour operators who organize their own vehicles. Okay, perfect. Let's talk more about public transportation. So would there be buses and I've heard tuk-tuks is also very popular as well. No, there is not a buses from airport to the main city. There are small Suzuki's, which call that, in which we can accommodate around uh, 12 people with luggage. So there's a mini traditional uh, Suzuki, which we found usually in uh, cities like Rawalpindi, Lahore and Karachi. So that colorful Suzuki is used to be a public transport. Okay, perfect. And uh, what about within the city, if I want to go from you know one place and start to another, uh, can I take public transportation? In that case, uh, buses or tuk-tuks? Inside the city, we cannot mm -hmm. use the public transport as buses, but we use, again, the same uh, Suzuki from different station to station inside of the city. Apart from public transport, we have different stations and service stations where we could get higher taxis and uh, bike years. All right, perfect. In case a tourist wants to, I know a lot of tourists that come to these destinations are very adventurous. 
So in case they want to travel on their own, uh, can they rent a car easily? Yes, sure. There, there are multiple uh, rental car options in Skardu. In Gilgit as well, in Islamabad as well, they are for Skardu. Tourists have, don't have any issue to hire uh, private taxis and stuff. Right. And would they require any special permits, like an uh, international driving license for one? This is in case of uh, self-driving. They need to be licensed from international. But if they don't want to self-drive, there are not any requirement for traveling with private taxis. Okay, perfect. And my last question before we move on to another one. Are there ride-sharing apps like Uber or uh, anything like that available that tourists can download on their phone and use? No, inside of Skardu, we don't have any such kind of apps, yes. Only we could say that the local people who, one of the entrepreneurs just launched one app, but it is yet not famous inside of the city. Okay, all right. Uh, let's talk about attractions now. Before we begin talking about attractions within the city, let's talk a little bit about outside the city. Some tourists love to plan you know, day trips. <laughs> Are there any good places to visit nearby? You mean through bike? In any method. Yeah. There are uh, multiple sources to do. The most tourist attraction, the most the most top trending is Skardu City. Shangri-La Resort is in the lower Skardu. Associated with the Shangri-La Resort, there are two other main attractions like Sokueli and Upper Kachura Lake. These two along with Shangri-La Resort. These three at the same destination around five to six minutes drive between. Apart from that, Diosai National Park is one and a half hour drive from Skardu City. Satpara Lake is 15 minutes drive from Skardu City. Karpocha Fort is half hour hike uh, at middle of the city. And the cold desert, which is the most magnificent place to experience is just 10 minutes away from the main city. Okay, let's talk about inside the city now. So are there any places in Skardu that is very famous with both tourists and locals? Inside of the city, there is, I would say, the one uh, polo ground, which is very famous to see during the festival, particularly because there are a freestyle polo match and the tournament as well of football. And apparently, Skardu is called a mini Brazil, as there is lots of the following of football and they play football. And apart from that, I would uh, say there is another desert in, inside of the city, which is Katpana Kaur Desert. So these two uh, major attractions inside of the city. Would you recommend just having a particular dress code while they're touring all these destinations? Uh, yeah, it is not a very tough religious uh, area. They are not too open, but each traveler must have to respect uh, the local culture, the local dressing, the local hierarchy of uh, religion. It is not recommended to wear shorts and sleeveless. This is the, the, form, the formal dress we can wear. Okay, good to know. Let's talk about some hidden gems. Every city, every destination has these places which are very beautiful, but lo lots of tourists don't know about them. Are there any such places in Skagul that you'd recommend to tourists? Exactly. There are multiple valleys yet to explore and a very few explore, like Chunda Valley, which is very near to the main city, is around 15 kilometers away. And it's a top hill above Skardu, and it is very beautiful to experience in all the seasons. Apart from Chunda Valley, there is um, Basho Valley and Basha Valley as well, too. Basho and Basha. And apart from that, there is... Um, Karmang Valley as well, where we have lots of things to see and experience to show the, the tourists. And apart from that, I would must recommend to see the uh, uh, other part of uh, Skardu, like uh, Gultari, which is yet to explore for the rest of the world. So these kind of places we have. Okay, sounds like a full itinerary. <laughs> a lot of tourists love to travel with their families as well. Are there any places or attractions within Skardu that's suitable for young kids? These all destinations which I have shared you with you is mostly are kids friendly and family friendly uh, tourist attractions. Okay. Uh, Skardu is a lovely place to uh, host uh, kids, friends, families, groups, uh, including adults and the senior citizens as well. Okay, great. Uh, my next question was actually about senior citizen, but that answers it. 
let's move on to the most exciting things tourists can do in Skagar. As I mentioned that a lot of tourists have like adventurous streak when they come to Skagar. Are there any activities particularly that's adrenaline seeking, perfect for thrill seekers within Skagar? Yeah, there are multiple locations, has multiple options to experience. The Col Desert has lots of things to do. Air safari in parasailing, horse riding, camel riding, 4x4 wheel jeep rides in the desert, and horse riding as well. And in Shangri-La and Upper Kachura, we have boating as well, surfing as well, kayaking at some places. And in Deosai, we have fishing opportunities to experience. And in Coral Desert, we have a photography experience to do in night with the Milky Ways full of stars and uh, the sky is wider and uh, in the backdrop, there is a beautiful mountain. These are the things we can do. And the camping. Mm -hmm. Sounds lovely. <laughs> really excited. Let's move on to the areas. You know, let's talk about the city center. Are there any cultural or historical sites within the city that uh, tourists can explore? Yeah, there is Karpocha Fort, which is a historical point to go there, mm -hmm. which is a 360 degree view from there to experience about Skardu industry. Uh, apart from Karpocha Fort, we have Manthal Buddha Rock, where is a Buddha statue is there and the carving of the stone. So tourists can go there as well. Okay, perfect. And any neighborhoods with best life? Nightlife. In Skard, again, must recommend the cold desert in night mm -hmm. for camping, for bonfire, and for photography. Okay, perfect. And what about shopping areas? We'll talk a little bit more about in detail, but just the gist, if there's any particular area that stands out for having really great shopping experience. No, there is not a specific place to do that, but we have general shopping center and shopping shops and markets at a very congested place. So from one corner to the next corner, we have two major markets where we could shop many things. Perfect. I'd also like to know a little bit more about the food spots in the city. Again, a particular area that stands out for having a lot of restaurants or food markets. Yeah, the same thing. Where the shops are available in the same markets, the food courts are available at those places as well. Where you connected to these shops and markets. All right, great. Let's talk about accommodation now. Any places that you recommend tourists stay? Any family-friendly places? Each year, each day, each month, Skardu is becoming more popular among tourists around the world. So the people from Skardu, the people from down cities are getting in touch with Skardu for this kind of business, particularly about accommodation. So each day we have very new to explore for staying. So there are lots of guest houses which are run by local people yeah. with a budget option. And then the two star hotels where there are lots of and three stars as well. Now they are becoming one of them is we could say a five star, which is Serena Palace Shiger, which is 45 minutes drive from Man City. Apart from that, inside of the city, we have multiple options to stay with families like Diwani Khas and Mountain Lodge and this kind of hotels we have. Okay, perfect. Are these options also cost efficient? Exactly. Multiple options to choose it for the cost efficiency, being a, a budget traveler opinion. We have multiple options to do that. And is there any favorite place of yours that you have to recommend to guests? When they come to Skardu? I must recommend when <clears throat> the budget-friendly tourist comes to Skardu is find the local guest houses, which is very cheap and very nice and neat and clean. And there is no rush. The people are very friendly and welcoming. So I must recommend them uh, local guest houses, particularly for the families. And apart from families, for the group travelers, I must recommend uh, hotels like uh, Masha Broom Hotel, Mountain Lodge, Concordia Motel and these kind of destinations. All right. And do these hotels also have amenities like breakfast or lunch, dinner, food options, things like that? Yes. These all said destinations have lunch, dinner and breakfast also. But in most cases, I don't recommend lunch and dinner inside of those hotels. But breakfast, they usually do with the prices. So I must recommend the local restaurants inside of the city because this is very near to the hotels 
I must say that try those restaurants, not inside the hotel. Let's talk about food now. <laughs> a lot of restaurants um, to explore and start um, yeah, local food. Can you recommend a uh, few foods, local foods that tourists should not miss out on when they're in Skagun? Local food, we have, there is one place where only local dishes are prepared by a woman in Skardu. Near Ali Chok, it's very famous for all the tourists we uh, can get there. And there are foods like the, the pancake, which we call azok in the language, and the pink tea, which is salt tea we call, and another kind of pancake, which is called wikisir. And... There are other things like soup, we call bale, which is very recommended in winter and at night as well. So yes, we have local foods as well. Let's also talk about any food markets that are there. A lot of tourists love to explore the local food markets when they go to a destination. So does Skadu have any food markets? No, there is uh, not any food, particular food market, but next to the shopping centers, shops and markets, there are lots of local restaurants where we could find these food options. Any particular restaurant that you'd like to recommend? Yes, I must recommend, according to taste and recipe, the local, I must recommend Diwane Khas for its taste. And for mix, Chinese and the continental, I must recommend Mashallah Food Corner, which we call MFC. And for the local foods, there are multiple options inside of the city markets. And the small huts are very famous. And which is your favorite restaurant, if I may ask? I recommend Mashallah Food Corner for their hospitality, for their food and the quality of the food. Are these restaurants, do tourists need to book in advance or can they just walk in? No, well, it's not necessary to book in advance. It's commonly open and we have available seats whenever we visit. Uh, a lot of tourists have dietary restrictions, like maybe they are vegan or they need a vegetarian or gluten-free diet. Do you think that they can easily find food options like these in Skadu? Yes, each restaurant, they have, they prepare everything live and in a short time. So we can customize our orders and most of the hotels have options of uh, vegetarian and chicken as well. Sometimes some tourists, they may not find the food that they need. In that case, they might need to hit a local grocery store or convenience store to buy whatever they need. Are there any? Yes, there are multiple general stores we got where we could find the bakery things, the packing, cooked food, the tin foods and seafoods, where else we can find them. A lot of times as a tourist, they may have a full day packed with beautiful things to see in Skadu and may not have the motivation or energy to go out. Uh, are there any food delivery apps they can download on their phone and order food from? No, until now, there is not uh, any particular app to to use. But Skardu is not too uh, too much far away. Inside of the city, there is uh, everything is accessible through phone and through call and through walk as well. So you don't need to worry about going for a walk. Uh, you could call them. They can deliver as well by each hotel. Let's also talk about a lot of tourists love to travel with their pets to a lot of different destinations. Are there any hotels or even restaurants that are pet friendly in Skardu? Firstly, I must say frankly that Skardu is far away from the rest of the world. Ones who reach Skardu with their pets, this means that they love more and more. So once they're inside in Skardu with their pets, Every hotel and every destination welcomes them, and there is no any issue with uh, keeping pet. That's uh, very good to know for me. <laughs> okay. I also want to ask about tap water. Generally, in a lot of different places, it's not recommended to drink tap water. So is that the case with Skarno as well? Yes, tap water is not recommended for the people who are not very habitual of mountain drinking. So I must say that the, the water is pure, but it is heavy to drink. So I must recommend to have mineral waters with them. You can buy in the market or from the hotel as well. Moving on to about healthcare options. Sometimes because of the weather difference, difference in longitude, latitude, a tourist may fall sick. If they fall sick in Skadu, can they easily get any healthcare facilities? Yes, we have multiple options for this, mostly from the government and the government hospitals runs 24 hours 7 
any kind of emergency, we could reach to the hospital. And the hospital is right middle in the city, and we can accessible within 10 to 15 minutes from anywhere inside of the city. Can you name a few hospitals? Just so yeah, general uh, uh, G H. Uh, in case it's not an emergency, but they still need some painkillers and flu medicines, can they easily get it without a prescription? Uh, yes, we can get it without uh, any uh, prescriptions. I already have a bit of an idea about the Wi-Fi situation, but just to ask about it, uh, do public places um, like restaurants, accommodations, they offer Wi-Fi? Yes, they offer Wi-Fi and we need to ask for the proper credentials for, uh, from them. Apart from that, the connection is very difficult to sustain with a good connection. So in that case, would you recommend to risk by a local SIM card? They must, if they are a freelancer, could say that they are doing work from home, this kind of jobs, and to connect it with their families because you are traveling so long and far. So I must recommend to buy uh, local SIMs from Scarbo and from Franchise as well, yes. And can we easily get it from airport? Yes, from airport as well, but I must recommend to buy from the franchise because Scarbo City is giving you multiple options of the local SIM as a franchise. I must recommend to do this from the franchise. Let's also talk about transactions. A lot of tourists, they prefer either cash or credit card, but in your opinion, the Scarbo SIM, you are the expert. Uh, what is the best way to do local transactions, um, so cash or credit cards? Mostly, it is cash. As the network is not proper over there, and it can be a disaster for the tourists if we could not pay uh, through our credit cards. So some of the hotels, yes, they are accepting credit cards, but most of the shops as well. But the uncertainty of the network is the main causes to avoid credit cards. And any particular place that has the best exchange rate in Scotland? I must recommend the local market and if they have time and sufficient money, then they must exchange at Islamabad. They have they give good rates. In Skardu, we are getting a very less rate. Right. Let's uh, talk about some important travel information that you know, some tourists have questions about, but generally they may not know a lot about this. Are there any particular medications or items like alcohol that tourists cannot bring to Skardu? Being a Muslim, alcohol, beer, and these stuff are completely banned. But in respect of the international tourists, some of the hotels like Serena, Mary, PC, they are offering on request through the room services in the hotels. But in Skardu, we couldn't find these amenities. Besides that, any particular medical drugs that is banned? Generally speaking, no country or city is particularly safe all the time for everyone. So are there any common scams that happen in Skardu that tourists should be aware of? The people who find Skardu through internet is someone, I must say that he is an experienced traveler. I could say that he must know and he must have enthusiasm to explore the last corner of the world. So they're well aware of everything about before traveling and for traveling. Apart from that, from our side, I must recommend to find a local tour agency through government websites and book a tour with them despite doing everything ourselves that finding car finding hotels and these kind of things so might be from 10 interactions out of eight maybe right at the ninth you could get gone so it's pretty difficult for the, the trip i also must ask that the city is safe for solo and female travelers absolutely if there is a place which is safe secure, beautiful, and lots of offering. That is, I must say, is the this region, Skardu. So it is quite safe, quite, and the people are very hospitable to welcome them. And um, any tips you'd like to give to those who come to Skardu for the first time? Again, I must say them to hire a local tour agency. Either it is cheaper or it's expensive, but be accredited tour agency is very helpful for them to be accountable in every aspect from promises to services. So the my recommendation is a local tour guide, a local tour company. Um, and any other important things? Yes, that is the exact number of days, spare one or two days inside of their itineraries to accommodate weather conditions 
and the unforeseen situations because the roads, the weather, the demographic area is quite far away from the rest of the world. So it might get late, the flights might be there are lots of rain and road blockages, this kind of things quite possible to happen. So I must recommend to spare one or two days inside of the itineraries. And we already spoke a little bit about safety, but do you have any particular tip about safety that you'd like to recommend to tourists? Yes, I must recommend them to come with all required information before traveling, like where they are going to stay, what is the name of the hotel, what is the name of the guide, what is the driver experience, or what is the color of the car, condition of the car, and how many people can accommodate, how many days we are going to travel, and how many kilometers each day we are going to travel drive and which camping sites we are going to stay are there are professional who are experienced in these uh, activities to perform and while doing the parasailing in uh, cold desert are the pilots are experienced or not this kind of all information they must have okay good thanks for that uh like we only have a few more questions to go so let's also talk about shopping now are there any particular souvenirs that are very unique to Skadi that tourists should definitely purchase? If the souvenirs, we have uh, multiple options, like the first and the most we recommend locally handicrafted uh, ibex shapes and stone-made pots, these two. And um, what are the best places to find these souvenirs? There are multiple local handicraft shops inside of the Skardo market, close to the hotels, close to the restaurants. So I must not name any particular shop, but there are lots of shops. Okay. Uh, and uh, I know some places where bargaining is very common. Bargain and traveling are the brotherhood things. <laughs> so it happens and we, the tourists love by doing bargaining with the people who live in Skardo. So they're just friendly and making jokes and yes they accept it any tips that you can recommend i must not share those or clever things but i must say that respect is the a very core thing to win the bargain one last question about the shopping section any shopping malls malls in the city no there is not any particular shopping center for all the things which we could find at the same place but skardu being a very late discovered area the people are not very open to, to tourists so they have segregated one or two shops two markets for women particularly so the women jewelry garments and stuff can find in their market as well all right let's talk about the climate you did mention that climate in Skardu can be a little temperamental so what's the best time to travel to the city? And are there any seasons that tourists should avoid? Aristotle says, beauty lays in the beholder eyes. So each season has its own charm in Skardu. We have particularly four seasons throughout the year. The winter has its own charms and the temperature goes below minus 25. Oh, okay. In summer, around 35. Mm -hmm. Spring, we call it blossom, which is around 20. Autumn is 24 to 15 degrees. It's pretty cold for me. I'm from India, so everything is cold to me. All right. And how long do you recommend tourists should stay in Skadu? If they love mountains, they must spare around about 20 days for a kind of trekking like to K2 Beskim, the world's most scenic and most beautiful trek to do. To experience because you will find lots of things inside of this trek glaciers altitude the mighty karakura mountains dry mountains and snow many things and if you are equally lover of nature and dry mountains then i must say that two weeks is reasonable to stay in skardu and on that note, i also want to ask if there are any essential items that tourists should not forget to pack when they plan their trip to skardu exactly a rain jacket mm -hmm. and a hiking shoes mm -hmm. must be with you and the charger of your phone. Also, some tourists love to experience local festivals and cultures. Are there any special annual festivals, events that have been inspired with that tourists can plan their trip around? Yes. We have multiple events throughout the year. Uh, one is the most famous one is spring 
time, which we okay. uh, celebrate the spring as a new year coming. So there we will have uh, music, dances, food festival, freestyle polo tournament, football and cricket tournaments. So each day the tourists can enjoy it throughout the day. Apart from that, we have a cold desert event, the Jeep Rally, which is international Jeep Rally. Each year they uh, execute it. And the time is fluctual because the government sees many administrative things from their perspective. So the preparation, the event management takes time. So each year the calendar shuffles and the cold desert uh, Jeep rally offers lots of things to experience for the tourists in three to four days event. Yeah, sounds lovely. Uh, I have one last question. A lot of places have tipping culture where uh, you know, you're expected to tip your wait staff, you know, um, to a guide as well. So in Skadu, is tipping very common? Uh, yes, tipping is very common. Most of the tour companies hire guides and they set salaries in keeping with the tipping as well. And the other staff, the supporting staff like drivers, chefs, helpers, this all, the bag carriers, porters, everyone who is associated with this tourism industry are supposed to get tips from general tourists. And what would you say is fair percentage of tipping, like 10%, 15%? It is not about the percentage because, for example, if someone is uh, traveling for the K2 base camp trek and there is uh, porters, there are guides, there are uh, cooks and they have different tipping policy must be. And people who is driving just for one day and a driver must get tip, that is a low percentage. So there is not a fixed percentage, but average, we could say that from $50 to $300 or $400. That's great. All right. So I think uh, that's all I wanted to ask you for today. But is there anything apart from what I haven't asked you that you'd like to tell tourists? Yes, I must uh, tell to the, to the tourists that whenever you plan for Skardu, don't share your absolute plan with the tour companies. Let them uh, fix your plan. So the, the area then let the guides speak with you that how can you get the best experiences? So share your thoughts that we want to experience nature, mountain, lakes, and this kind of stuff. So make our plan. So respect their decision and their uh, itineraries. Great advice. All right. I think that's about it. We spoke about Skadu a lot. And I'm sure everybody watching this would be inspired to travel to this city and make it more well known. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for joining us for our session today. We'll end with this question here and uh, we will have more exciting new episodes for you guys next time. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Bye-bye.